hot and humid are two things that you'll be met with in Kenya's coast region. This kind of climate might work for tourists, but such a condition is not good for agriculture. For this reason, some communities in Taita Taveta County have embraced new economic ventures. They range from community wildlife conservancies to directly earning from tourism and vested interest in carbon trade by protecting forests for financial sustainability. In our special feature tonight, Conservation and Climate Profit, Agnes Olo tells us more about how this shift to climate-friendly ventures is changing the fortunes of these communities. Within the rangelands and hills of Taita Taveta County, this is Taveta Town. We visit three different community wildlife conservancies new and old. Our focus drawn to Lumo, a community wildlife conservancy on 48,000 acres of land. Mgeno Community Wildlife Conservancy on 53,000 acres piece of land. And Kasigao Community Wildlife Conservancy resting on 52,000 acres of land. Different from Mgeno and Kasigao, Lumo Sanctuary is formed by merging of three ranches, Lualeni, Mramba Communal Grazing Area, and Oza Group Ranch, hence the acronym LUMO. LUMO Wildlife Community Conservancy was established in 2001. Kasigao Ranch got a certification to become a community wildlife conservancy in the year 2021, while Mgeno became one of the latest holders of a community wildlife conservancy certification from the Kenya Wildlife Conservancies in May this year. We transit from the ranch and uh, become a conservancy so that at least you can invest out of the wildlife, uh, wildlife uh, keeping or conservancy. Communities in Taita Tavita County with big acres of land were known for livestock rearing and mining, but due to the unpredictable weather conditions, that quickly started to change. You know, farming is not doing well here in coastal region. So that's why we have tried to embrace uh, conservancies. And uh, in fact, uh, we also add up uh, ecotourism. <laughs> When the season is good, of course, we have a lot of traffic at the gate, so means that uh, it means that uh, our incomes, you know, uh, you know, increase. Apart from venture into wildlife conservation, the carbon trade, a business that currently seems to be picking up in Kenya, is a boost to other forms of development. The carbon trade in Kenya dates back to the year 2009. 2010. This was one of the first projects in Kenya and uh, possibly also in Africa that we became the first first communities to begin to earn from uh, the carbon markets. While understanding carbon trade is still a complex affair even to the elite, Monaki agrees that at the introduction stage, some work had to be done to ensure the community grasps the basics of the trade. But what is carbon trade and how does the business work? You know, these are mechanisms, you know, uh, to allow especially developing countries uh, to support the reduction of um, uh, the greenhouse gases from the, uh, from the atmosphere uh, through uh, various, you know, uh, interventions, whether it is through tree planting, because trees, of course, uh, sink uh, carbon. And in return, um, these developing countries are able to receive what we call carbon money uh, through sale of what we call, you know, um, uh, uh, carbon, you know, carbon credits. Out of 33 community and privately owned conservancies in Taita Taveta County, 15 conservancies have adopted the carbon market project. The clients are companies uh, that are uh, emitting uh, through manufacturing um, and production and they are looking to offset their carbon emissions. For Kasigawa and Mgeno Community Wildlife Conservancies, carbon money has elevated the projects towards their business scaling. Kuna miradi ambazo hatungeweza kutekeleza 
tukitegemea mapato kutokana na, na, na ufugaji pekee tumekuwa na uwezo wa kufanya miradi ambayo inasaidia upande wa uhifadhi na upande wa ufugaji determination for prices for carbon market exchange however has been a major concern in the first place we had uh, to we got we had gotten uh, about 19 million uh, a year from the extractions from the red carbons then we continued uh, for the second year and the third year we had been gotten ab about 25 million in making sure that you safeguard you know uh, that particular forest vis-a-vis -vis the amount of money that you get at the end of the day it really doesn't really pay off as unpredictable weather conditions also play a role in price fluctuation and as at now it's just recently when the rains were there we had uh, gotten about 70 million but uh, due to the climate change and the droughts which has been uh, beaten us for about five to six uh, seasons we've just gotten 39 million wildlife conservancy management allows controlled eco-friendly developments which in partnership with private developers help address various human and nature-based challenges <laughs> Conservation players welcoming the July 2023 communique by the Kenyan president temporarily stopping issuance of licenses and permits for development in key wildlife conservation areas in the country. until they comply with the laid down land use rules and come up with working systems in the conservancies. Conservationists, in line with United Nations Sustainable Goal number 15, champion for resilience-oriented conservation. With climate change a global concern, carbon trade and wildlife conservation turns out to be a climate action to combat global warming. Though it is a contribution towards climate action by Taita Taveta communities, some climate change crusaders hold that carbon trade is somewhat a decoy. When you bring in the carbon markets, now we are drifting us from the core you know, issue and we are removing responsibility from where it is. If somebody is reducing the emissions so that you can continue emitting, what is the net effect? The net effect is zero. You know, meaning uh, that we are not necessarily uh, advancing as a, a, as a global community in reduction of these uh, you know, particular emissions. Together for implementation. United Nations Sustainable Goal number 13 requires an urgent action to combat effects of climate change and its impacts, further predicting that by the year 2030, an estimated 700 million people will be at risk of displacement by drought alone. Hence, an urgent call for the globe to work towards achieving 2050 net zero emissions target, limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade. Kenya is working towards reducing its carbon emissions by 32 percent come the year 2030. Agnes Oloka Chola, Citizen TV. <music>